listen, I love my Steam Deck. I think the Steam Deck is probably one of the best things that could have happened to handheld gaming. It literally exploded the scene much more than anything else, not to mention that the community is amazing. But there are a couple of things that you can do in order to enhance your experience on the Steam Deck. Plenty of people have talked to me about Decky Loader, but I never actually really dove into Decky Loader to learn a little bit more about what it does and what it's capable of. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to install Decky Loader onto your Steam Deck and seven of my favorite Decky Loader plugins that are readily available right now and work just fine. Before we get into it though, I'd appreciate it if you could go into the comments section and let me know what some of your favorite Decky Loader plugins are. I found seven that I personally really enjoy for myself, but there might be a diamond in the rough or something that I haven't found yet. So I'd appreciate it if you could just let me know what you're into. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. This video is brought to you by Ugreen and their Nexode RG line. Not gonna lie, sometimes I look at my chargers, I look at my adapters and I can't help but think, man, these are just boring pieces of tech that are just sitting there doing absolutely nothing but charging your device. Ugreen took this a step further by creating these cute little tiny robots for their Nexode RG line. They have two variants. They have the 30 watt option and then the 65 watt option, and they charge whatever it is you plug into it safely and quickly using their GAN technology. They even make these cute little faces depending on whether something is connected or charging to power supply fully charged or there isn't a device connected to it. Now, the 30 watt option comes with only one USB-C, whereas the 65 watt option comes with two USB-Cs and one USB-A port. That USB-C one port on the 65 watt charger can support up to 65 watts max. So no matter what it is that you use to connect and charge, you can do so safely with a little bit of style. If you're interested in learning more, click the link in the description below and thank you to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. Before we get into all of the plugins that are readily available through Decky Loader, we have to install Decky Loader first. And in order to do that, you have to hit the Steam button, go all the way down to power and hit switch to desktop mode. At this point, I would recommend connecting a keyboard and mouse. Uh, I have this combo that's there. If you're interested in this keyboard, I have a link in the description below that leads you to that. But any keyboard and mouse combo is something that I would recommend at this point. Just it makes life easier. That being said, I do also have a link in the description below that leads you to Decky Loader's GitHub page, but you can open a browser on your Steam Deck and just Google it. It's very quick, it's very easy, and you'll be able to find it that way. Once you download Decky Loader onto the Steam Deck, all you have to do is double click the icon that's there and go with the recommended install option. Once you have that installed, all you have to do is switch back into gaming mode on the Steam Deck and it will be right there. In order to access the Decky Loader plugins, all you have to do is hit the three dot button on the bottom right hand corner of the Steam Deck itself. Once you do that, the quick access menu will open up and you will see a little plug icon on that menu. Hit that and then from there, you'll go ahead and have access to the store as well as several settings and options that are readily available for you. Now for me, I'm loving everything that I've seen. These are the seven plugins that I really enjoy, but if there are some plugins that you don't see in this list or something that you would definitely recommend, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to check it out. Out of all of the ones that I've seen, these are my favorite. The first plugin that I want to talk to you about is called the Vibrant Deck, and the Vibrant Deck plugin fixes one of my major gripes that I did have with the Steam Deck, and that's its screen. The way that colors are represented on the Steam Deck screen is just abysmal in comparison to other monitors and screens that are out there. The levels of blacks are pretty bad, and the overall colors that are being able to be shown are pretty bad as well. With this plugin, what it essentially does is that it pushes certain gamma sectors of or gamma colors in the actual screen. You can do this by just oversaturating all of the colors at the same time, or you could oversaturate specific channels. So you have your gamma red, your gamma green, and your gamma blue. From there, you can change the way that the screen looks for each and every single individual game, just like you can change the different individual settings. Like if you wanted to have a lower TDP for an indie game versus a higher TDP for a AAA title. The same thing can apply when it comes to these screen settings, which is nice, but at the end of the day, I typically use an umbrella effect on whatever's there. I don't apply on a game by game basis because when it comes to the monitor and the colors and the way that it's presented, I just want it to look punchier and good and well calibrated. So if you're into pushing the colors that are readily available in the color profile, then I would definitely recommend Vibrant Deck. 
The next thing that I want to go and talk about is called CSS Loader. And this makes, in my opinion, the biggest splash out of all of the plugins that are readily available. The main thing that I like about this is that it changes the overall aesthetics, the way that the OS feels, you can change and adjust the sounds that are there. I mean, there's just so much that you can do with CSS Loader. I also like the fact that it has its own storefront. So if you go to deckthemes.com, uh, you will have to log in with your Discord account. If you don't have one, then you're gonna have to create one, unfortunately. But uh, when you go ahead and log in, you're able to go ahead and go through the entire store and see things that you like and things that you don't like. And if there's something that you do like, you can favorite it or you can star it. And then if you log into your actual deck theme account using a specific code that populates on your Steam Deck, then everything that you've picked and chosen through your deck theme profile can populate on your Steam Deck. It's super convenient and super easy to use. Obviously, you don't need that. You could just use CSS Loader and go through the storefront over there and just pick and choose things that are there. And they only take seconds to download. So it's very, very convenient to use. And it's super, super just easy and intuitive. I like the fact that you can stack multiple themes or multiple things through CSS Loader to create a unique and custom effect. So far in trying different things, I haven't had anything crash yet or kind of just uh, get in the way of each other when it comes to custom code like this. But as far as I can tell, it, it just, it runs well. I, I don't really have to worry too much about it. The one thing that I am concerned about is that if Steam decides to push an update to their OS, whether or not it will break specific things uh, in CSS Loader and let alone Decky Loader as a whole, but that's a, a whole different conversation. I do like the fact that there are specific themes that affect either the Steam Deck and the way that it works uh, in game mode, or desktop mode or big picture mode. So you can change how different things work when it comes to that. It's just, it's an awesome plugin. And honestly, out of all of them, I still think that that's probably the biggest one, at least from what I've seen. Storage Cleaner is best at shader cache management. Now, for those of you that do not know, whenever you download an application and run it for the first time or download the game and run it for the first time, there's going to be a shader compilation that goes ahead and compiles. And this allows things to run smoother, have less lag and so on and so forth. As you move on to the next game or the next app, that shader cache still stays on your hard drive. And as the developer goes ahead and updates the game, that shader cache will go ahead and continue to update and you will continue to go ahead and grow that shader cache over a long extended period of time. This allows for you to go ahead and delete shader caches that you don't use anymore. If you don't want to play the game anymore, you haven't played it in God knows how long, you can just delete it and save storage that you can go ahead and use to download other games and other titles. It's great because you can manage all of the games that are sitting there on your hard drive, as well as all the shader caches that have compiled over who knows how long you've had your Steam Deck. It's awesome because you're able to save space and use that space for whatever games you want to go ahead and play in the future. HLTB for deck is how long to beat for the Steam Deck. And we've all been online. We've all tried to look how long it takes to beat a game and how long to beat is awesome information. You can get that straight onto the game page of your Steam Deck. The only thing is that you can't see this from the store. You actually have to have this in a game that's already downloaded or in your library. So when you go onto the game page on your Steam Deck, it'll pop up right above all of the information that's there. Now the default option goes ahead and kind of clips a little bit of the image that's there of the game. So I prefer the clean default view, which makes the back transparent. So it kind of looks like it's integrated right into the OS. It's a nice little tidbit of information that just is nice to have. I like to know how long it takes for for things to go ahead and beat. And that way I can go ahead and, you know, squeeze in games that are a little bit shorter in between longer games. Power Tools is the end all be all when it comes to anyone that wants to tweak things on the Steam Deck. I mean, you're able to change things from CPU configurations. You can even change the individual core configuration. You can change the amount of threads that are readily available. You can change the power consumption, GPU free. I mean, there's so many things that you can do and there's a ton more. But the interesting thing about this is that I can see this benefiting older titles, older games that are being ran on the Steam Deck that are from a time when we just didn't have threading or as many cores as there are that are readily available. This will also allow for less power consumption over a long extended period of gaming. Obviously, if you're running a AAA title that came out, I don't know, yesterday, then there's no way that you're going to be able to get the best performance possible. But if you're playing something that came out in the early 2000s, then this might be the best option for you in order to make sure that you get the optimum performance of an older title.
Now, I've been playing a lot of Baldur's Gate 3, and I absolutely love it. I'm currently at the end of Act 2, but when it comes down to the gaming experience, if I wanted to take it downstairs to the living room and play it on my PlayStation 5, I can do so with Cross Save. On the PlayStation 5, whenever I hover over an icon, uh, typically a song or a theme of some kind plays. You can kind of do the same thing on the Steam Deck now using game theme music. That plugin, essentially what it does is it starts playing the theme of a, a game or a song of a game right when you go into the game profile. So not when you're actually going through, but when you actually go into the game profile itself, it'll automatically start playing. It'll be in the background. And frankly, it's kind of cool. It just adds a nice little touch when it comes to the UI experience on the Steam Deck and Steam Deck OS. Animation Changer does exactly that. It changes the animations for different things or going into different states when it comes to the Steam Deck itself. So you have three options. You have the animation on boot, animation on suspend, and there's a throbber animation option. When it comes down to it, you can change it and there is a store here. So you can go into the store and users have uploaded their own animations for you to go ahead and download. You can also just use whatever animations are readily available. There is a baked in option into the OS now in comparison to when the Steam Deck first launched, but I like the fact that users can go ahead and upload different animations and those are readily available for you to go ahead and use and change however you want. Also, you can randomize the animations that play at different points. So if you just want to go ahead and have a collection of favorites, you can go ahead and use it and do so, and it'll switch it up as you go ahead and do different things on the Steam Deck. The more that I use Decky Loader, the more that I realize that there's an untapped potential on the Steam Deck itself, especially with changing how things go. Because for me, this feels like getting a brand new phone without getting a brand new phone. Like it just, there's a new layer of paint that's there that just makes it nice and shiny and feel brand new. So if there are any plugins that you recommend, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to check those out. And if you wanna hear my thoughts after having the Steam Deck for five months, then click this video over here. And if you wanna hear my favorite accessories that aren't so expensive, click this video over here. And until next time, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.